the refugee has become one of the most important terms in the <coughs> public discourse of uh, recent years. The same can be said about the term of the people in the context of regaining power for the people from the elites. I think that, those, uh, that these two terms have organized topics in politics on both sides of the political spectrum in order to interrupt the liberal consensus to replace it with a more inclusive or exclusive order. What's interesting in this context is that people arguing for a more exclusive order were trying to create an atmosphere uh, of fear towards refugees while trying to avoid the term of a refugee and convince uh, every, everyone that what was happening was a ma massive migration, as if they were afraid a refugee is a subversive category that in its meaning questions the binary opposition of um, uh, our other used by those people to provoke strong reactions and other political support. What is it then in the term of a refugee that makes it so subversive in politics organized according to the enemy friend binary and how can it affect understanding of the term of the people? Uh, refugees is a massive political phenomenon appeared after the First World War but if we understand a refugee as the opposite of a citizen, this uh, term can define everyone who doesn't have full rights, not only people who don't have them in, the, in a country other than the country of origin. Uh, such an understanding makes the refugee a universal figure of the excluded since ancient Greece. They can apply not only to foreigners, but also in different historical moments to women, slaves, uh, serfs, LGBTQ plus communities, etc. Uh, well, as far, as far as I'm concerned, no one before Hannah Arendt wrote from this position about politics as a whole. She took this position in a very personal essay <clears throat> that was written as a form of naming or trying to understand a situation she was forced into by the Nazi German regime. The essay was entitled We Refugees and published in a Jewish magazine called Menorah Journal that was published in the United States. It's obvious that she was not articulating an abstract political idea, but the reader was trying to name a very particular historical situation of crisis that showed the incompatibility of categories that frame the horizon of Western political thought while also considering the possible outcome of the situation or uh, what we can learn from it. She starts the text with an important remark I quote, we don't like to be called refugees, we ourselves call each other newcomers or immigrants, end of quote. The status of a refugee is in this situation uh, an unwanted one because it assumes that the person who is a refugee had to flee the country of origin due to something he, she did or believed, which is not true for most of the people aren't writes about. The refugees she refers to tried to assimilate in every country they fled to and wanted to be 150% um, Viennese or French aiming to forget the past and the reasons that pushed them out of their homeland. Aaron concludes the first part of her essay and I quote again, apparently nobody wants to know that contemporary history has created a new kind of human beings, the kind that are put in concentration camps by their force and internment camps by their friends, uh, end of quote. Uh, not even uh, those human beings, the refugees, German Jews driven by naive optimism that a new land will give them a new identity. Arendt writes that admitting to be a Jew would mean at the time for those refugees exposing themselves to the fact that they are nothing but human beings human beings who as such are not protected by any specific law. Therefore, for them passports, birth certificates and tax receipts have become tools of modern discrimination. She calls on the refugees such as herself to accept their status as a form of what can be called an anti-identity, 
and become conscious pariahs. Mm. I quote, those few refugees who insist upon telling the truth get in exchange one prices advantage. History is no longer a closed book to them, and politics is no longer the privilege of Gentiles. They know that outlawing of the Jewish people in Europe has been followed closely by outlawing of most of European nations. Refugees driven from country to country represent the vanguard of their peoples if they keep their identity. The Committee of European Peoples went to pieces when and because it allowed the weakest member to be excluded and prosecuted." End of quote. And this identity that is constituted by refusal of the identities connected to the existing peoples uh, enabled the strongest philosophical anti-Nazi standpoint, which redefines the existing politics that allowed national socialism and fascism to emerge. The position of a conscious pariah has not upended institutional politics, all fat all thought it became, uh, it's becoming available to more and more people of the world who are becoming displaced or not accepted for other reasons by the existing systems of power. There are still new and more powerful fascist movements being embraced around the world in the recent years proposing uh, politics of exclusion. The so-called refugee crisis has become an inherent part of politics that has continued to be constituted by the nation-state logic and the notion of citizenship. Passports, birth certificates, and tax receipts still are used to segregate human beings, and politics are still the privilege of the Gentiles. Such reading of Arendt's ideas is an inspiration for the Italian philosopher Giorgio Gamben, who puts the Arendtian categories in the center of his critique of modern democracy and political thought. Uh, his writings partially echo some of Arendt's ideas while also altering them. For example, if one can say there is any hope in his thinking, it concerns the figure of a conscious pariah as a, a pariah as an inspiration or, as he would probably say, potentiality for a different politics or community. It's clear, for instance, when Agamben asks what is a people. He starts the short essay answering the question from a philological observation that in most European languages the people means both everybody and precisely the excluded. Therefore, what we understand by the people is always a dialectical oscillation between the two meanings. To name the political consequences of uh, such a situation, he refers to the terms from Aristotle of Zoe and Bios, which he associated with exclusion, naked life, and inclusion, political life. This double meaning is called by Agamben the fundamental biopolitical fracture which has defined the Nazi politics, and I quote, today in a different and yet analogous way the capitalistic democratic plan to eliminate the poor not only reproduces inside itself the, um, the people of the excluded, but also turns all the populations of the third world into naked life. Only a politics that has been able to come to terms with the fundamental biopolitical split of the West will be able to arrest this oscillation and put an end to the civil war that divides the people and the cities of the earth." End of quote. What are then those uh, politics that uh, come to terms with the fundamental biopolitical fracture and how can we place the figure of a conscious paria in a constellation of such politics? Agamben attempted to answer those, these questions in an essay that was translated to English as Beyond Human Rights or We Refugees. It was written in 1993 when 20 million immigrants were expected to come to what was then the European Union from countries of Central Europe. Now, after the so-called refugee crisis, when uh, our imagination is shaped by the pictures of refugee camps on Lampedusa in Italy, camps in Greece, camps in Cayer, or those in Texas. Uh, the text and the problems raised in it 
have become even more current than in the 90s. Also, again, the ambiguous term of a refugee has acquired new meanings. The main idea of Agamben's text uh, comes back to Arendt's article. It starts with the reference to the protagonist of Arendt's text, Mr. Kohn, who illustrated the path of German Jews in exile, seeking new identity. In all of the states uh, he, uh, he fled to, which led him to become the conscious pariah. But Agamben proposes a next step from individual or group consciousness towards uh, a redefinition of politics uh, from this perspective to redefine the whole system that enabled or even was built on massive exclusion. The main idea of this step is abandoning, abandoning the fundamental concepts through which the subjects were defined in Western political thought, such as the citizen or the worker, and proposing a new political theory that would start from the notion of a refugee as the basic political subject. This perspective enables a Agamben to call for the re-announcements of human rights or uh, rights of asylum that define the refugee as a temporary and unwanted status that should be changed by procedures under which the groups and individual refugees would obtain a new identity or a resident permit in a new country. The Italian philosopher calls rather for challenging the nation-state logic as such, he writes, the refugee should be considered for what it is, namely nothing less than a limit concept that at once brings a radical crisis to the principles of the nation-state and clears the way for a renewal of categories that can no longer be delayed." End of quote. In other words, Agamben calls for rethinking politics from the perspective of a human being as such, not from the perspective of a human being as subject of law or even human rights. To illustrate this way of constructing political communities that would replace states, Agamben references one of the ideas of solving the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. In fact, this solution is a bit out of date. Maybe it's a paradoxically a sign that this was the right means to avoid problems that nation-state logic can only postpone and make worse, because it is incapable of solving them. At any rate, the idea, which is uh, a variation of Israeli-left uh, proposal for one state without ethnic segregation, was to make Jerusalem, the whole city, a capital of two states. The territoriality the situation would create, and Amben thinks, is a whole new potentiality for international relations. The two states would be replaced by communities in the state of Exodus from one another. The rights of citizens would be replaced by the refugee of the singular. Such an understanding of a territoriality as a political solution also provides a new idea of Europe that could be changed into a space in which all citizens and non-citizens are in the state of a refuge or exodus, which at the same time would define being European. And Gamben writes that by Europe he doesn't mean a topographical sum of certain territories. The redefinition of politics and separation of birth from nation would enable the idea of a people as a subject of democracy to regain its political meaning. <clears throat> it's important, important to mention that democracy here is not a slogan, but rather an idea that cannot be realized in the world constructed by nation-state logic in which the notion of the people is an empty slogan, and so is uh, democracy. Agamben writes that today, while we talk about democracy, we mainly mean a technique of government, which has nothing really special about it. This problem, according to him, has roots in tradition that emerged from translating uh, the Greek term of politeia as both constitution and government, that come together in Kyrion, which means power. There is uh, <clears throat> no possible articulation between the two heteronomous elements. 
and I quote, and that is from their disarticulation, that it is a question of making the ungovernable, ungovernable, sorry, uh, emerge, which is at once the source and vanishing point of every politics, end of quote. I would say that uh, ungovernable is a people freed from the law, which has constituted its power by using the two meanings of the term um, for centuries. In other words, the refugees, a people in the state of exile, are the only potentiality to reinstitute democracy as such, um, as the constitutive power that doesn't exclude anyone and doesn't need the government to realize itself. The question is how that ungovernable people will emerge. Agamben in his book, The Coming Community, writes about the all, already uh, present signs of future politics of whatever singularity that is not mediated by any condition of belonging or absence of conditions. Uh, and I quote, the novelty of the coming politics is that it will no longer be a struggle for the conquest of control of the state, but a struggle between the state and the non-state humanity, and uh, ensure a table a disjunction between whatever singularity and the state organization. In the final instance, the state can recognize any claim for identity, even that of the state identity within the state. What the state cannot tolerate in any way, however, is that the singularities form a community without affirming the identity, that humans co belong without any a uh, representable condition of belonging. For the state, therefore, what is important is never the singularity as such, but only its inclusion in some identity, whatever identity, but the possibility of the whatever itself being taken up without an identity is a threat the state cannot come to terms with." End of quote. In other words, the anti-identity of a refugee as a conscious paria provides uh, a way to form a people, humanity, freed from the fundamental geopolitical fracture and therefore impossible for the state to tolerate. Uh, the example uh, has one other dimension that is important for Agamben but also uh, in the identified more clearly by Judith Butler in her book entitled Notes Toward a Performative Theory of Assembly. In a chapter entitled We the People, she starts from Arendt's notion that politics needs not only a space in which to appear, but also bodies and articulation. In that, in that context, Butler says that gathering changes to a people in a performative art, not through articulating, but through the fact of bodies appearing in one place. Gathering is an act of will, says Butler. It doesn't mean that the people should have similar ideas or communicate the same thoughts. She rather asks uh, how the politics will change when the abstract rights that individuals demand will be replaced by a multitude of embodied actors articulating demands in language or in another form. What I find interesting is that um, on the topic of people she says two things, that uh, in the moment of representation also by some groups claiming to be the people or representing the people, a people disappears and also that it constitutes uh, itself in a clash with the state or police. We, that uh, is uh, constitutive for the feeling of community, is more important than anything else, no matter uh, if one calls it people or some other term, because it's necessary condition for manifesting the sovereignty of the people against the sovereignty of the state. This is the uh, anarchistic base of democracy that manifests itself in a moment of change 
or decay. Therefore, we can uh, say uh, that one hope for a different politics lies in a new identity, in a new anti-identity that will constitute itself with a multitude of bodies gathering in one space. Of course, other question raised by Butler is how we understand gathering in space. Uh, those bodies will perform and constitute a new politics of non-representation that clashes with the state and regains public space for the people, the refugees. The question that remains to be answered is that most of the movements which both Agamben and Butler write about were crushed and defeated even if they managed to change something temporarily. So maybe there is something missing in the idea of a multitude of bodies expressing affects and claiming public space. Also, while uh, their visions of the coming politics transcend left and right, for now those strategies uh, are just as effective for far-right movements seeking a stronger state under their control. Um, how should we then distinguish the anti-identity multitude from the strong identity multitude if it doesn't matter what ideas are articulated by the gatherings? In other uh, words, how does Arendt's call for anti-identity or Agamben's call for the refugee of the singular change the understanding of the people? And <laughs> thank you.